the toe line I've got to make the most Spent all these years going From pillar to post Now I'm standing on the outside And I'm waiting in the rain Tell me why must I always explain I've always gone out of my way not to be a rock star Anybody who knows me knows that just like the sun shines. I never even wanted to become famous. I work for a living. You know what I do? I sing, I write songs, I make records, I do gigs. I work for a living. you what's left to do. Didn't, didn't you tell me before that you would like to get into the big band stuff or to get back to more blues, rhythm and blues, black music and all of that? Well, I, I just sort of come full circle and, and you know, couldn't see it because it was right in front of my nose. Um, because when I, I, what I started my whole, uh, I just wanted to sing music I like, music I like, which was blues. That was like the whole point of, you know, getting into it in the first place. You, you, your quote is saying you're a black man in a white man's body. Yeah. Oh, it feels like that a lot of the times. Basically, I'm, I'm performing. You gotta help me. I can't do it all by myself. Oh, you got to help me, baby. Can't do it all by myself. If you don't help me, help me find someone else. When you walk, walk with me. Do you see yourself as essentially a blues singer? I do see my, that's where I came from and anything after that came from that. So I, I started off as a blues singer, so my, my whole thing developed, and soul music as well. My, my song started out of, you know, basically soul music, how they wrote songs in those days, sort of Sam Cooke, um, the way he wrote songs. So my songwriting came out of that soul music and blues. My voice came out of blues to begin with. Your main influences are? Well, John Lee Hooker was a main influence. If you say main, I think Lead Belly, um, Sonny Terry, Brandy McGee, Muddy Waters, saxophone players, Jimmy Jufrey, Jerry Mulligan, Chet Baker, Ray Charles, James Brown, the name of you. Going away so far. Live on, live on For the future Today Today Come Days are gone Live on Don't look back Don't look back mm -hmm. Beautiful when do you think rock stopped rolling? When it, well, when it, when it lost the role. When it lost the role. When it lost that, you know, um, that beat. When it lost that beat. It, it wasn't rock and roll after that. And uh, this can be, I mean, there's people that go into this in a, on a technical level. I don't have the info with me, but uh, when it stopped rolling, when it became rock. But rock became then a broad, broad term. You know, which which means rock means anything, right? anything from great to mediocre. You know, and it all comes under the heading of rock or pop or whatever. But 
It's, I mean, anything can sell, you know. I mean, it's always been like that. There's always been an, ele an element of, you know, even bad music selling. It's always been that element. But I think it's just more today. Uh, because it, you know, they can, people can get away with more. There's a broader range of getting away with more, you know. So does rock and pop bury rock and roll? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it as dead as a dodo, as a passe, or could it be revived? No, it's, I mean, rock and roll is still active. It's just, it's just not as big as it was, but there's, it's underground. It's been pushed underground. Can you see a revival? No. Why not? No. Um, because it, I think at this point it's, it's, it's non-commercial, and maybe that's what it should have been in the first place. Um, it's non-commercial because I think it's a very, uh, um, it's a, it's a, what do you call it, it, it's very esoteric now. I mean, the real old rock and roll stuff and the real old rock, they're not getting, they can't get much work. They don't get much work, those guys. I mean, there's, there's people around that started in the beginning with uh, Elvis Presley and uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and these, there's people that started the same time as them, or even before them that are still doing gigs now, but you never hear about them. So then you do think <coughs> it's passe and dead as a dodo? Um, I don't know, because anything could happen. Look at blues, you know. I mean, when I started singing blues, I mean, people didn't, you know, 90% of the people who came out never heard of it. Because it's with them and so the rhythm monarchs. and blues was something that was unheard of. So, I mean, look what happened now to blues. So you never can tell. Oh, it's stormy, but a tooth is just the same. All the storm in my head The tools is just as bad Winds is worse Thirst is also sad Getting back to, say, inspiration or, or when you're writing a song, how do you know when a song is finished? Just instinctively now. Uh, but there's a tendency now to just f finish it quickly. I mean, when, when I first started, I used to like ponder them a bit more um, and, you know, edit a lot more and then rewrite them and all that. Sometimes I rewrite now, but mainly I just take them as they, as they come out, as the lines are coming, and just stay with that. Are you ever afraid that the music or the words will leave? No, no. Um, well, you could put it another way. They could run, you could run out of things that you want to say, you know, or ways of saying them. You could run out, you know, but as long as you find a way to say something, um, you know, then you can write something if you find a way to say whatever it is. Uh, okay, have you ever had periods where you've dried up totally and then...? Well, I had a period where I thought I dried up, but I hadn't actually dried up. I, I sort of, um, I, I think I just um, lost interest. I lost interest during that period. Maybe uh, it was well, for, you know because I just got fed up with the whole uh, scene, the whole you know uh, situation. So, so you kind of gigs, making records, and I got fed up with it. So it was uh, it coincided with that, and I think I just just got uh, I, I I didn't I didn't feel like doing it. You know. Do you go into periods of exile sometimes? Oh yeah, all the time. How long has all been the, the longest period? Of well, exile? that was the longest period. That was a couple of years. And then do you come back like recharged? Um, well, I came back coming from a different angle. I, I came back, um, you know, writing from uh, more of an uh, um, in, impersonal theme, uh, an impersonal spiritual theme when I, when I came back writing again. But for me, it was just sometimes it was hard to get them to come out. And sometimes, they, you know, they didn't come out. So now what, what happens is if I, if I write anything at all, I, I just keep writing. Uh, so if I find if, if I stop, then it gets slowed up again. So I just keep going. Do you get it's like writer's anything block? lifting weights or whatever. Do you ever get um, Well, as I say, I, I would get block if I didn't do it consistently. Then I would get block. Do you have many unreleased songs? Um, I don't really know how much. There's quite a bit, but usually the ones that are get you know go out are the ones that, that you want to put out usually. But there's a few unreleased things, not that many. What comes first to, to you, the words or the music? Well, it's A, B, and C. You know, A is that you get a melody line first or chords first. Uh, that's A. B is you get the words first. And C is you get both at the same time. And does it just happen that way? or? No, it's the variables of those three plus 
you know, other times you just get, you get one line or two lines and that's all you get. And it might be that some songs I've written, uh, you know, I got a couple of lines and then I wrote the rest of it five years later. There's, there's no set rule. You don't have there's any no set rule. rule at all? Well, there is no rule. There, there is no rule. You, you, you make your own rules up, but uh, I tend to write on whether I'm inspired or not. So the inspiration makes the rule for me. No guru, no method, no teacher. Do you think cynicism is the death of imagination? Um, I think it can be for certain people, but it can also be the beginning of it, you know? I mean, sometimes cynicism can be the beginning of imagination. For a lot of times, it has been for me. When I've, when I've reached, like, a dead end, and then cynicism has, like, um, taken me into, uh, uh, you know, having another jumping-off place from seeing an angle on something I didn't see before. Whereas if I had it stayed with it, it would have, you know, burnt out inevitably. Have you ever felt the urge to grab back a song and fix it? Um, yeah, I have sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Or I've put things out uh, which, you know, you know, get, get thrown back at me later, you know. For instance, I've put out stuff that was sort of, um, when I was uh, researching, um, I mean, I used to research, you know, some spiritual stuff. And, and write songs from that viewpoint, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that I believed in it. I can mean, I was, I was researching it myself. Um, can you give me an example? Well, certain it? things like theosophy, for instance, um, and, uh, you know, like various religions, say like Buddhism or whatever, or, or Christianity, you know? Um, when I was like just looking at them and, and, and researching them, and then I, I wrote songs along those, but it didn't mean that I believed this. It was just, that was part of what I was into then, and then, <clears throat> Years later, I've had that thrown back at me. It's like, well, that's what I'm supposed to be, and I pick up something and read. He's supposed to, you know, I'm supposed like to be... Like Scientology. Yeah, yeah, I'm supposed to be a Christian, or I'm supposed to be a Scientology, or this or that. I mean, I was just... And that was just research. Every day, it's getting better and better. How much do you hate being asked to explain things? <laughs> quite, a, quite a bit, actually, quite a bit. Because I, I always like to move on. I never like to, you know, dwell on, like, the whole creative process is about moving. And, uh, I don't know, I've, you know, I mean, I've got loads and loads and loads of press clippings, so, but I don't even look at them. In fact, some of them I look at and go, like, I'm, I'm glad I'm not there anymore. It's like you're looking at someone else, isn't it? Well, it's, it's like, um, um, there's a difference between, like, you know, what you do and, and how it's perceived at certain times. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, the thing I do live is, is really where I'm at. And, and the latest record or records is where I'm at at a given time. And, uh, you know, the other stuff is great. And, uh, you know, that was then, that was what was happening, you know? But it's, it's always the movement that interests me. Above any other form of artistic expression, music has the ability to bring a person.